And Chuck and I both are here to welcome Steve Werblum, who is a friend of mine from LA and who is a brilliant storyboard artist. And uh, Steve has been in those trials you may have heard of several years ago where he was the storyboard artist. And he has the inside scoop, I hate to say this, but about guilt or innocence. And he knows every move that was made in the courtroom. So uh, that was in itself a fascinating experience for him. Um, not only just because he was a storyboard artist, but at the end of every day, Judge Ito, the judge in that case, had to okay his drawings and allow him to either put them out or not because of the nature of what he picked up in the courtroom. They had to be approved. But in any case, that's only one part of this man's career. The rest is he's done maybe a hundred movies storyboarded, but ten of them you will all recognize. A lot of you will recognize those movies. And we invited him up to, uh, to share with both MPT and uh, illustration because they cover both schools. His work uh, covers basically both schools. Uh, it's not only for the film school because he works with directors, and he sees what their vision is and listens to them, and then he does the storyboard work for their breaking down the camera angles and so on through a whole film. And as he will share with you tonight, uh, some of those storyboards he did were actually listened to by the director. And they took heed and said, that's really so good. Basically, I said to him recently, you don't even need, the director didn't even need to be there. <laughs> that in fact, his storyboard carried the, uh, was part of the opening of the film. Uh, and Chuck spent the day with him today over at, uh, at Illustration, introducing him to various classes. So um, anyway, we want to welcome Steve, and he has this presentation he wants to share with you. Thank you all for coming. Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming this evening. Appreciate it. Well, after that, what do I say? I don't know. <laughs> they took the picture. They said, this is fantastic. We're going to use it on the front page. I became history. They paid me $35. <laughs> but the next thing they asked me was the one question I've been waiting for. Have you ever done courtroom art before? No. Would you like to? And I did. And I covered the biggest trial that the Philadelphia Daily News had in their history was the murder of the son of the heir to that throne of the newspaper Knight Ritter chain. And that was the start of a career that I tried to get to by going here. <laughs> and it worked. That's how that story goes. Now, in this trial, the idea that I was there at all was ironic because here's the jury. And look what's over their heads. You've got a still camera and a movie camera, video camera. So why am I there, right? People ask me when they, when they saw this happening, uh, the Bronco chase that was going to put him here, oh, you're going to cover the trial of the century. You're going to cover the trial of the century. Well, no. Why would I? They have cameras in the courtroom. And they did. But this trial was the biggest trial as a courtroom artist I ever covered, even though there were cameras in the courtroom. Never had an experience like this in my life. That 20 years later, in Los Angeles, I would be covering the biggest trial in history. This one. Now, I don't know if you were all around to remember what an event this was, but it took up basically 20 hours a day of every television station's programming in the world for a year and a month. Now that's a long time. It's a long time for anybody to be in court, especially the jurors. <laughs> uh, but I was there, and so were all the reporters. And a lot of the things that I had to do, uh, I wasn't allowed to see. So I was given descriptions of things, you know, because you're not allowed in the room when there's, when there's, uh, what they call uh, voir daring a jury. Okay, when they're asking them the questions, 
that are going to determine whether they're going to use them are very private and personal questions, and they don't want anybody in there. So instead of that, the reporter would be, one reporter would be in there, he'd come out, he'd tell me what would be going on, and um, I know what the courtroom looks like, so I made this up. Here we go. This is Denise Brown. Denise is the sister of the victim, and these were three in individual shots that I did of her, and again, the camera can go in on each one separately. Never meant to be shown as a montage. Cato Kalin became a star at the O.J. Simpson trial. Blonde-haired, handsome little model boy. He stole the show, this guy. Anyway, there he is. <laughs> now, I covered both trials, both O.J.'s murder trial and the civil suit, which followed. And I've thrown in a couple of drawings from that trial, not to be redundant. Because what happens is, when a criminal case is lost, <laughs> or won even, the defendant sues. And it's the retrial. It's the same thing all over again. It happened here. It happened with Rodney King. Covered the same trial twice. That's OJ with his family. And there's the Goldman family. And again, the idea is not just to draw people's faces. You want to draw their emotions. You need to draw their body language. You need to draw you know, anything that you can do to, to show the people what, what is going on. And the jury, not allowed to show their faces, ever. And Judge Ito would throw this little seal on there. Ito approved public information office. Boop. And he only put it on there unless he liked what I did, you know, that didn't show anybody. And uh, I believe we have more here. Yeah, this is the jury. Now, the jury, when sequestered in any trial, they are sequestered not only from the public, but from each other. Okay. However, in this trial, they decided to protest some things that were not, they didn't like. And they all came dressed in black one day. So that's how sequestered they were. Somehow they communicated that plan. Uh, don't know how, but there you go. Anybody recognize him? Come on, help me out here. Guess. Steven Spielberg. So he came in to testify. He had a stalker. And, you know, again, these pictures aren't portraits. You know, I'm not going to tell you that I'm, I'm a portrait artist, although I could be. But that's going to take longer. These are, these are drawn so fast. And, and you know, you, can't, you don't have time. The reason you're there is because you can draw very fast. You can do it right. And you get a likeness. It doesn't have to be a portrait, though. Anna Nicole Smith, what a sweetheart. She had a hard life. I got friendly with her at this trial because uh, there was a lot of waiting around, and uh, I'm not really a member of the press. You know, I'm an artist. Well, I'm more dressed up tonight than I would be when I go to court. But, you know, I, I, she really liked me because I wasn't a, a suit and tie guy with a microphone in her face. And, you know, we got, we got very friendly. But, you know, it was very tough on her for this trial because she's, well, first of all, She's deserving of this money. I mean, this is a, this is a woman who, who married a billionaire, and, you know, he gave her all of his money. He died. Then his family says, oh, he didn't mean to give you the money. We want it. That's what that trial was all about. And that's probably why Anna Nicole wound up on ETV making a fool out of herself, because she didn't have this billion dollars that she was deserving of. And that's what this trial was all about. And uh, the next trial, the next show uh, slide, you'll see that uh, she actually signed this one for me here. So that was nice. 